Good evening, everyone. My name is Rebecca Muscant. I'm a grade 12 student, and if you know one thing about me, it is probably that I like physics. And no, I do not want to be an engineer. You would be surprised by the number of people who automatically assume this as soon as I tell them one of my interests. But personally, I find myself to be far more intrigued by the theoretical, the science that tells us how the world works simply to satisfy our own curiosity what we normally refer to as pure science. This includes everything from evolutionary biology to quantum physics. Now, pure science tends to incite very different responses depending on the context. When discussed alone, most people will tell you that pure science covers some of the most interesting and engaging discoveries to date. When you ask people to name the first scientist that comes to their head, pure scientists such as Albert Einstein, Stephen Hawking, or Marie Curie are some of the most common names that you will hear. But despite this widespread interest in pure science, it receives far less funding and resources than its applied science counterparts. If you ask a politician what they're more likely to spend money on between the International Space Station and a vaccine for the COVID-19 pandemic, then the answer will be very obvious. So today, I want to talk to you about pure science. Specifically, the hypocrisy that exists due to our high expectations for pure science paired with our low levels of commitment to it. So to begin, why should we care about pure science in the first place? I think that what most people forget when this question is posed is the value of human curiosity. Pure science is the logical extension of our capacity for questioning the unknown. It may not have any short-term practical benefits, but it focuses on answering the great eternal questions of who we are, where we come from, and the nature of the universe surrounding us. When we discuss the biological origins of the first complex life forms or send a satellite out to explore the solar system, we are entertaining a very human desire for knowledge that will contribute to the answers to these questions. What it lacks in everyday applications, pure science responds with an appeal to our innate curiosity that we would not be the humans we are without. Moreover, pure science goes beyond socio-political divisions and often unifies people around their shared interest in learning more about themselves and their surroundings. Think of the International Space Station or the Human Genome Project, both of which brought together scientists from some of the world's most clashing countries politically and incited worldwide support from everyday people. On top of all of this, pure science can lend itself to practical applications often unforeseen previously. We can look to GPS technology land mine removal systems, radiation therapy, and many more inventions or innovations currently used in everyday life as examples of what happens when we pursue knowledge through pure science. These technologies were not the end goal, but rather a byproduct of something greater. Despite their importance, they would not have been possible without the groundwork laid by pure science. We often see this in the field of medicine. When we invest in the ISS, it allows us to develop vaccines, treatments, and surgical equipment in a different environment. For example, bacteria such as salmonella are more likely to spread in microgravity, which allows scientists to work on developing a microbial vaccine for it more easily in space. With all of this established, pure science seems like a worthwhile pursuit, one that deserves our attention and our investment. However, this is not typically how we treat it. We praise pure science for its innovative ways of thinking and ability to unify humanity through our collective curiosity. Yet, when it comes to individual instances of when to give pure science what it needs to thrive, we turn away from this in favor of short-term, safer options. There is valid reasoning for this, of course. Primarily, political and economic factors often impede development in the pure sciences. But this is because pure science often falls short when only viewed from these two lenses. Pure science is a risk, and one that does not make sense to take when only examining it this way. Politically, spending resources on funding projects that do not yield an immediate benefit can be seen as wasteful, especially when there are so many other immediate issues that do require financial investment. This makes sense intuitively when faced with a choice between spending on helping people in poverty or financing a project that may not work out. Meanwhile, pure science also returns far less capital in the short term than applied projects. Because corporations are more likely to invest in something they can sell, the market for pure science is very slim. There's no real way to sell knowledge. 
As such, grant funding often goes to projects with an immediate visible impact. However, both of these arguments are judging pure science unfairly. How can it make sense to judge pure science, which by definition does not contribute to an immediate practical benefit by its immediate practical benefit? These concerns are entirely valid, but they ignore the main reasons for pure science's existence, as well as the widespread public interest in it. When we discount the value of human curiosity, we risk impeding development towards those great questions that guide us all. Of course, there must be a balance between pure and applied sciences, but pure science deserves a greater share of the investment. It is a risk, and it may not always work out. But this should not be the reason for our dismissal of traits that are intrinsic to our humanity. Pure science is how we can follow our curiosity and investigate the world around us through this use of the scientific method and logical reasoning. For a species that prides ourselves in our capacity for reason, pure science is one way for us to use it. We owe it to ourselves to give pure science the chance it deserves to help us better understand. The best way to know is to try. Thank you.